Adventures of Brawny and Keen. Story 1. The Cave Escape. Little Keen breathed in deep, letting his chest expand with the morning air. I love the smell of morning, he yelled. Brawny laughed in agreement, and the sun smiled back, warming their tummies and cheeks. Being outside made them feel alive and free, which was why they loved camping so much. You think Mom and Dad are awake yet? asked Brawny. I think so. I smell bacon and eggs. Keen and Brawny jumped off the rock and raced for the campsite. As Brawny approached the picnic table, he caught a delicious whiff of the bacon and eggs. How does he smell so well with such a tiny nose? Brawny wondered to himself. Brawny had never met anybody with a nose as sensitive as his three-year-old brother's. He smelled so well, sometimes it freaked him out. After a scrumptious breakfast, the boys asked Mom and Dad for permission to go exploring. Absolutely, Mom replied. Just stay close enough so that you can always hear us. There are wolves in the forest. And don't forget to bring your survival gear, said Dad. Yeah, and our flashlights too, exclaimed Keen. Brawny helped Keen as they collected their gear and packed the ropes, pocket knives, flashlights, and snack foods into their backpacks. Ready? asked Brawny. Schnoogie. Keen liked to make up words, and this, for whatever reason, was one of his words. Brawny was one of the few people in the world that knew that schnoogie meant yes. Brawny sped down the path after a jackrabbit, a cloud of dust in his wake. Keen had sprinted after the rabbit, too, but Brawny had blasted ahead. Keen had never met anybody, not even adults, who were faster than Brawny. Dad always said Brawny moved more like a panther than a five-year-old kid, and he was right. As freaky as Keen's sense of smell might be, Brawny was freaky fast. The jackrabbit disappeared out of sight into the thick underbrush. Brawny stopped and looked for Keen, but didn't see him. Suddenly, Brawny realized how far he had run from camp. Mom, Dad, can you hear me? The only reply was the whisper of the wind through the trees. Keen caught up to where Brawny was standing. It's dark here, said Keen. Is it nighttime already? No, it's still morning, but these old trees block out the sun. We should go back now. Keen nervously looked around, waiting for his eyes to adjust to the darkness. His ears and nose were playing tricks on him. Little did they know, deep in the forest, hidden in the darkness, a pair of glowing yellow eyes was watching and drawing closer. Brawny slipped his backpack off of his shoulders and knelt on the soft forest floor. What are you looking for? Without realizing it, Keen was whispering. My flashlight! Brawny whispered back. The loud sound of zippers filled the forest air. Suddenly, Keen froze with fear. I smell a wolf! Brawny's hand stopped moving. He looked up, his eyes scanning the darkness for movement. He saw nothing, but trusted Keen's nose more than his eyes in this dark place. Brawny looked at Keen. Are you sure? Brawny mouthed the words almost without a sound. Keen took another slow sniff, held his breath, and nodded. Brawny still hadn't found his flashlight, but it was too dangerous to stay here in the dark part of the forest. He grabbed the top of his open backpack with one hand, grabbed Keen with the other, and started to run for the sunlight. Suddenly, an angry snarl echoed through the trees. An enormous black wolf with glowing yellow eyes leapt out from behind the trees and charged toward the boys. The wolf's shoulder was as high as a man's head and its teeth as long as a finger. Keen looked back and could see the giant black wolf getting closer. Run faster, Brawny! Brawny squeezed Keen's hand tighter and ran with all his might. The burst of speed pulled Keen forward, lifting him off his feet. Had this been an ordinary wolf, Brawny could have easily outrun him. But this particular beast drew its supernatural powers from the darkness of the deep forest. The wolf continued to gain ground, his glowing yellow eyes fixed on his prey. Suddenly, the wolf flinched and slowed. He wasn't running nearly as fast now, but why? As the wolf stepped back into the cover of the trees, he started to run faster. Then Keen figured it out. The sunlight made the wolf weaker, but the darkness made the wolf stronger. Keen looked back and watched the wolf leap from shadow to shadow, zigzagging to and fro, seeking the darkest path. The sunlight makes him slower! Go up that hill! Keen pointed up the hill toward a clearing, bathed in beautiful sunlight. Brawny turned up the hill. Up ahead, he saw a pile of large rocks. In the middle of the rocks, a small entrance to a cave, much too small for the giant wolf to fit inside. The wolf was just behind, showing his big teeth when the boys jumped through the small entrance and into the cave. The wolf crashed against the rocks. A loud snarl and a howl echoed into the cave. 
The boy scurried back away from the cave entrance. Sharp claws and angry teeth slashed at the granite entrance above their heads, trying to get inside. Come on, Keen! yelled Brawny. We have to go back into the cave. If the wolf gets inside, he'll be stronger and faster than ever before. Hurry, go! Brawny and Keen got out their flashlights and ran deep into the cave, searching desperately for a way out. For an hour they searched, but found nothing. Keen sat down on a rock to rest. His wet hair hung heavy with exhaustion. But he quickly looked up, again alert. It smells weird in here. Keen shined his flashlight back into the cave. A rock moved in the distance. The rock moved again, rolling toward them at first slowly and then faster. Strangely, this rock didn't make any noise as it rolled across the bumpy granite floor. The boys jumped up onto a boulder, a safe distance from the black rolling ball. Suddenly, the ball stopped. Two big white eyes blinked open, and a huge mouth full of sharp teeth started to talk. Blah, 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 said the furry ball. Don't eat us, screamed Brawny. I don't think he's going to eat us, said Keen. He's just asking what our names are. Brawny's face had never looked more nervous nor confused. What? My name is Keen, and this is Brawny. Keen crouched down as he approached the little creature. The black furry ball was about the size of a basketball. Two big round eyes and one large set of sharp white teeth filled most of what would be called a face. Two flappy ears stood loosely perched on top of his head. He didn't have any legs or hands, but moved by rolling. Blah, 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 you blee blob, said the creature. Nice to meet you, blee blob, said Keen with a big smile. Blah, 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 Brawny was still very confused, but slightly less nervous. How can you be sure he won't eat us? He says he only eats rocks, replied Keen. Rocks, huh? Brawny didn't look convinced. Bleeblob could see that his new friend Brawny was a little scared by his big, sharp teeth. So he decided to demonstrate. He rolled over to a big rock and took a big bite out of the side. Rock crumbs spilled out of his mouth as he tried to talk with his mouth full. <laughs> Keen laughed as he translated. See, he says, I only eat rocks. Seeing the cute little monster chomp away on his rocks made Brawny laugh. But then he remembered the wolf. We have to get out of here. That wolf is going to break into this cave any minute and we'll be trapped. Blee Blob smiled proudly and shook his head. Blee 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 Blee. Yeah, that's a great idea. Keen patted the little monster on the head and scratched behind his floppy ears. He says we don't have to worry because he could chew a tunnel through the rocks for us to escape. Bleeblob rolled over to the side of the cave and started to chew into the mountain. Crumbs and dust spewed from his mouth as he chomped. The boys watched as Bleeblob slowly disappeared into the tunnel as he chomped. Then there was light. Yeah, he did it! exclaimed Brawny. Then a loud crash and a howl echoed through the cave. The wolf had broken inside. Keen and Brawny tore off their backpacks and jumped headfirst into the narrow escape. And they pushed and wriggled as fast as they could toward the light. The boys hadn't gotten far when the wolf pushed his large, wet nose into the tunnel, trying to sneak a bite. Brawny could feel the wolf's hot breath on his ankles. Hurry, Keen, he's right behind me! Keen popped out of the tunnel first, threw on his backpack, and reached into the tunnel to pull out his big brother. The boys ran all the way back to the campground without stopping, being careful to stay on lighted paths. When the two dirty little boys stumbled into the campsite, their mom and dad scooped them up and hugged them with all their might. Where have you been? We have been so hurried looking all over for you. We got lost in the dark forest and a giant black wolf with glowing yellow eyes chased us into the cave. We never would have escaped if it weren't for a blee blob who used his sharp teeth to chew a tunnel for us through the rock. Brawny listened to Keen tell their story and realized that this was going to be a hard one for mom and dad to believe. Uh-huh, I see. And who exactly is blee blob? asked mom incredulously. The little round monster we found in the cave. Mom paused with a disappointed look on her face. Keen, you shouldn't make up stories and pretend like they're real. Having an imagination is good and fun, but this is serious, and you need to tell us the truth. We were very worried about you. No, it's true, Mom. Just like Keen said. Brawny didn't know what to say to convince them. Keen felt so sad. He slid off his backpack down onto the ground and sat on it to rest. Just then, the backpack jumped and growled and outrolled a black, fuzzy ball.